I would start, I think the biggest gap is the inconsistency across the board with different ombudsmen. So in our view, we now live in, in the world of ADR, of alternative dispute resolution, and that is a perfectly adequate and viable method for resolving disputes. But an ombudsman should be the gold standard amongst that. And I think there is a, the spectrum of ombudsman to ADR is not properly defined. And there are a number of ombudsmen which are effectively ADR places, and, the, and there are a number of ADRs which probably could be pushed to being ombudsmen. And I think we've had a problem that, the, that there should be, in our view, a real rigidity over what an ombudsman is. An ombudsman should have statutory powers, or at least powers defined by statute. If, it's not, if the ombudsman itself isn't set up by statute, it should be derivated from statutory powers. Most crucially, it should have compulsory membership of its sector. That is, for me, one of the core differences between an ombudsman and an ADR. You, every company in the sector should have to comply with the ombudsman, both in terms of forcing it to deal with an inquiry, provide evidence, and enforcement of actions. Even amongst some statutory ombudsmen, who, where every member body has to comply, the ombudsman itself cannot for, for, force action unless you take them to court. Well, that makes it absolutely pointless. And it means that people go through this long and laborious process of getting an adjudication, and then, if the company doesn't want to play ball, they have to go to court. So we look in terms of structure and the final thing that goes on with statutory provision, statutory provision, of course, means there's an oversight body that comes from with some form of parliamentary authority, whether it's a select committee or whether it's a delegated authority. There is some form of oversight to make sure that that ombudsman is behaving as an ombudsman should.